All right, what's up? So um, today I am going to be picking up on this GitHub issue that I stopped with yesterday. So we identified a bug um, in the remote PyTorch, or, or, yeah, remote PyTorch execution logic. So a big part of uh, OpenMind, um, if you actually don't know what OpenMind is, um, you can go to github.com slash OpenMind here, and these are the repositories. Um, so we're working on uh, tools for privacy preserving and secure AI. Um, more specifically today, we're working on a dependency for federated learning. So if you're curious about federated learning, you can check it out here. Um, there's quite a bit on it in the world. Uh, this is probably the best blog for you to check out. So this is um, by Brendan McMahon, who also helped invent uh, federated learning. And um, yeah, it's a pretty cool technology. And so what we're going to be doing is, is um, creating a federated learning system um, inside of this PySIF library that extends a major deep learning framework uh, uh, with federated learning techniques. The first one that we're working with is PyTorch, um, which is really what I'm working on today. Um, now, a underpinning part of federated learning is the ability to send and receive tensors over a network. So for example, you can see um, in this example notebook, we have the ability to um, create a tensor, which is a fundamental building block of deep learning system. So it's just a collection of numbers, right? So in this case, it's a one dimensional array of numbers. Um, and we have the ability to take that tensor and send it to a remote machine. So this remote machine is, you know, presumably something that exists, maybe around the world, maybe just in another machine in my cluster or whatever. And I can send a couple tensors to different machines, but then I can still execute logic on those tensors, see x and x2, um, in a way that feels like they're on the local machine um, and feels like they're just, you know, uh, in, you know inside this notebook even. Um, and that's basically a fundamental piece of how federated learning systems are going to, or how our federated learning system is going to work. So we're going to build this kind of generic remote execution capability and then we'll build some convenient um, federated learning systems on top of it. Um, so that brings us to the bug that was identified yesterday. So in the dot send method, right, which we're actually seeing being used right here, so x2 dot send, um, if we're sending a variable object um, with a gradient, um, the um, there's an error basically. So here's the the way to reproduce it. So we create a um, a tensor, it's wrapped in a variable. So uh, in PyTorch, there's a difference between um, tensors and variables uh, in 0.3.1, um, which is the version that we're using right now. So a tensor is just a list of numbers. A variable is a list of numbers with the option to also save a gradient or a derivative on those numbers. Um, and yeah, so when we accident, when we were trying to ship a derivative or you know dot send a variable object which has a derivative attached to it, we get this nasty error. And so what I'm going to be doing today is trying to figure out what is the cause of this error um, so that we can close this issue and get back to working on kind of the generic federated learning uh, piece that we're interested in building. Um, I have reconfigured my layout here a little bit to hopefully be easier to work with. So um, I'm going to keep the little chat room open here on the left so it's consistently available. Um, if you see me do something stupid or you have questions or anything like that. Um, other than that, I kind of, because I just started using Twitch, I expect this to be a pretty quiet, uh, quiet day. You can also message me in this Team PySwift chat over here. Um, and uh, yeah, let me just um, check this, check this message from Jason here real quick. So I'm going to hit pause. Cool. And uh, Jason said that he uh, <laughs> is chilling here. So imagine, Jason, you might be the only guy that's chilling here. Oh, I guess there's four people. Cool. Um, so yeah, feel free to chat in the team chat if you have questions. Um, and Jason, of course, if you're around, uh, uh, definitely pipe up if you see stuff that I'm doing that's silly. Um, hello. Um, is this, are, are you Jason? Survey says, yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, cool, so yeah, I'm gonna try to tackle this. Um, 
To be honest, I expect it to be quite difficult because I only kind of know what I'm doing in these interfaces. Um, Jason is the real expert, so hopefully Jason, you will be um, uh, around. Um, okay, so first things first, let's reproduce the error. So I believe all this code is still the same. Okay, hit reboot. And cool. And I believe it was this one that caused the error. Boom. Okay, so we're getting exactly the same error that we had before. Um, so I don't know if you can see that. Um, it says invalid registry is pointer is true, but owners is zero on tensor with this ID. Um, so what this is referring to is um, when we're sending and receiving tensors around, um, so when I call dot send, right, it sends a tensor to a remote machine. Um, but um, it doesn't actually delete the tensor here. Instead, it creates a pointer, um, which allows us to, to modify the tensor. So if I wasn't doing a variable, I could say x equals torch dot flow tensor. Two, three, four, x dot send remote, and but I can still do y equals x plus x, right? And this x that it gave me uh, right here is a pointer object, right? And so is pointer is set to true, right? But x dot id, uh, sorry, x dot owners um, is this virtual worker. Let's see which one that is. Okay, so this is the owners is set to one, right? And that means it's one is the ID we gave to the remote worker, right? So what we want in this variable um, is for it to both send the gradient and the object to the remote worker, and the local pointer should be set to true, and owners should have an ID of one. However, strangely, what we're seeing is that is pointer does get set to two, but owners is still zero on this tensor. So um, the error that we're getting is basically saying, hey, um, it looks like I own this tensor, but the variable that I have is a pointer, which doesn't make any sense. Like, why would I have a pointer to an object that is on my own machine? Um, and so this is sort of the point at which the um, your PySift gets confused, and so it throws out this error. Now, what we're not sure of is exactly where in the logic um, this is happening. Um, now, something that's interesting here is that I believe this is actually not the tensor itself, it's the gradient. So if we look at, um, um, let's diagnose that. So we have model, we should reboot, restart, reinitialize model, restarting notebook. Okay, so here's our model object. It's a variable, as you can see. Model also has a gradient, um, which has been generated because we called back, backward. Now let's look at the ID. That's the ID of the model. That's the ID of the gradient. And now if we send it, it errors out on the tensor that's whose ID is 165, which is neither of these, <laughs> um, which is confusing. So now the question is, where does 165 get initialized? So we do see something with the ID of 165 being sent in the JSON message. Okay, so if you don't remember from yesterday, um, what this JSON command is, it's a, um, it is what is actually being sent over the wire from the local machine to the remote machine. Um, could it be the data attribute? Um, yeah, it could be the data attribute. That's a good point. Ha! It is the data attribute. Jason, you're a genius. I'm so glad you're here. Um, okay, so it's the data attribute. That saved me uh, maybe 20 minutes. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> um, okay, so it probably is data attribute. So let's see. Cool, this makes sense. All right, so it looks like we, we have IDs for variable objects, but when we're serializing it, um, um, oh, it's kind of weird. I feel like I should like, Jason is the man. But uh, you can hear me, so I can just say it out loud. Anyway, um, I need some coffee. Okay, so um, the gradient is getting sent, but it's not getting um, initialized. Now, one thing that I tried yesterday, uh, Jason, just for your benefit, is I tried commenting out this whole underscore var to pointer thing um, and just said, okay, this is where it's airing out. Um, my first boss, uh, <laughs> 
uh, in, my first programming boss, his name was Keith. Um, <laughs> I remember the first time he said, well, if it's erroring out, just try commenting it out and seeing what happens. And you know what? Sometimes that works. Um, so hooks.py line 984. So when I comment this out and I build it, which takes a second, um, basically what you'll find is that um, it doesn't error out. Um, but the gradient does get sent across the machine. However, the gradient does not get registered on the receiving machine, which is a little bit weird. Um, also, I'm pretty sure that, okay, so we don't get an error. And then model does become a pointer, but the real question is, does grad become a pointer? And grad does not because grad is pointer equals false. What about grad at owners? And grad at owners is still equal to zero. So the truth is, there's probably, this leads me to believe that there's nothing actually wrong in Verita pointer. It's something ahead of Verita pointer that is not working correctly. Um, so let's back up from Verita pointer and see later. So so at, at, yeah, at this point, yeah. So it's, it's not an error in Verita pointer. It's something before it. Um, now, because this is the gradient, so we see var.grad is not none, the second time it calls var to pointer, which is where it actually errors out, is just with it calling it recursively. So we want to find is where is this getting called? Um, yep, that's where. Okay, so we have hook self var to pointer. As I recall from the stack trace, that's where this was too. 909 in hooks.py, 909 hooks.py. Okay, so this is where it's getting called. So somewhere in the logic before this line, what is not happening? Um, Model.grad.data does get turned to a pointer. So is pointer is set to true, but the owner does not convert to an ID of one. Um, let's just go ahead and validate that. Um, we had some logging down here that I should go ahead and, no, that's fine. Um, I am in the mood to print out some stuff. So let's print out self dot mm, ID, no, data dot ID, maybe, yeah. So self.data.id and then print self.grad.data.id uh, self.grad.data.id and we can rebuild and I just want to make sure that this is I don't know I just I, I'm inclined to check my assumptions before going too quickly so this is a little bit obvious um, Ooh, tests failed. That's surprising. Oh, we aren't always going to have a grad when we're here. Um, so if is attribute what is it? Uh, has attribute. Yeah, that's it. So if self.data or self has attribute grad, then print the grad ID. Let's try this again. Survey says Ran nine tests, one of them failed. Um, looks like not all of them have data. Okay, so if self.grad has attribute data, which we know the one that we care about does, right? Because we know that the one that we care about, um, what we can see it being serialized right here, so we can see that it has a data attribute. And ran nine tests. 
Looks like all of them passed. A lot of stuff got printed out, but should be good. So now it's running in here and see what we see. So The tensor ID is not one that I recognize. I where it aired out this time. It's that seven eight. It's model dot grad dot eight eight ID. So here's the funny thing. That should have printed out right here, but it didn't, and I'm not quite sure why. Is self not the object? That's very strange. So saying ver to pointer and then self, let's double check this. So right now I was saying self.grad.dataid because I thought that that was pointing towards the object, um, but I could be wrong. Um, we call ver to pointer. Ver to pointer goes down here. It gets past self, ver, hook self. So the first parameter is the variable, which is what we're passing in. The first one is self. It's got to be self. Why is it? Why does the ID appear to be different here? So at this point, you know, I, I don't really care about the ID, but what I do care about is making sure that when I'm in, uh, analyzing something here in send underscore that I'm analyzing the right object. Um, so it could be that these has attributes are actually failing. So instead I'm going to do a try accept. Just make sure that I didn't write that little logic incorrectly. So let's go ahead and rebuild it. Try it out. Tests built fine, awesome. Let's reload. Three eight one is ver.grad.data.id. Seven six seven. Where is seven six seven coming from? Fascinating. We don't even see it in the serialization logic. That is really weird. So previously I could have swore that in the JSON that we were sending over the network we saw the ID of the gradient object that's giving us this error. Like the, the tensor that this is referring to. Um, but now it seems to have disappeared. And that is very, very strange. So, okay, so let's undo what we did. Um, I don't think we actually did anything else. Super weird. Fair.grad.data.id. Which is, which here is self.grad.data.id. That is just mega surprising. Um, let's see if we can find it up here. Whoa, it changed. It changed. Did you see that? Oh, the ID is getting reassigned. That's super weird. That's definitely not supposed to happen. Okay. Okay. This is all correct, right? But now... If I do model.grad.data.id, I get a different number. That is
Wait a minute. This was supposed to be model the data ID. Okay, so model data ID, I think, stays the same. Ah, too much stuff going on. Okay, let's try this one more time. Okay, the first time, I'm going to run this one, not that one, this one, not that one. Gorgeous. Okay, now I'm going to call dot send. This whole three one four six business is the one we got the error on. And now, okay, so the model dot data does not change ID, but model dot grad dot data does change ID, which means this is getting this object is getting reinitialized somewhere. That is bad juju, very bad juju. Fascinating. I think I know what this is. So the gradient is getting reinitialized, which is probably why owners is getting set to zero. So this was a super squirrely kind of bug that I think, I think that so there's this funny thing. Um, what we're doing is inherently weird. Uh, PyTorch is written in C++, and then they use a lot of code generation to wrap Python around it. Um, and that causes the Python objects to actually get replaced quite frequently, meaning they, you know, they get they get destroyed by Python garbage collection and then recreated but with the same C++ under the hood. Um, so it, it feels like it's the same, but the, the Python object is sort of switching around a little bit. Um, and so I think what's happening here is that we're encountering one of those cases where PyTorch actually destroys the Python object and then creates another one on top of the same underlying C++ memory. Um, and that is causing stuff that we put on later, uh, like how we initialize it, for example, to do strange things which is super weird. Um, and the question is, how do we validate this hypothesis? That when we call dot send, gradient is getting deleted. Oh, probably should turn off text messages um, for now. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, Jason, can you hear me OK? I seem to remember you saying that my microphone was a little bit soft before, and I don't know if I tested it particularly well this time. Testing, testing, testing. Am I like loud enough? Maybe. I'll turn it up a little bit. Um, okay, hopefully that's loud enough. Um, maybe Jason's sleeping. That's okay too. Um, okay, awesome. Thanks, dude. Um, groovy. So. We oh was that too loud now is that why you were yelling? <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so what we need to do is test the destruction of Python objects and basically register. <laughs> Maybe what does that even mean? Uh, uh, okay, so we need to test. Um, we need to test whether the Python object is getting destroyed and then reinitialized. The annoying thing is that we call register object like a billion times. Oh, is that too loud? Okay, yeah. I'll let you turn down in your Twitch video. Um, probably easier for you to turn down than. Well, I guess it's starting to clip on my side a little bit too, actually. So I'll turn it down some too. Um, still figuring out the whole Twitch situation. <laughs> Sorry to blow out your ears. Um, that reminds me of a time I was watching The Office and uh, Michael Scott 
thought he was turning his microphone volume all the way down so that he and his girlfriend could make out in the hallway or whatever, but he was actually turning it all the way up. <laughs> it was such a funny episode. Um, the American office, not the British one. Okay, let's see. So I need to test whether they figure out why this gradient is getting reinitialized. Um, I'm tempted to try to go for the fix right immediately. Um, there was this thing that we did for variables. Should be still around. Data backup. So, what if we did grad backup too? If this works, I will explain it. It did not work. <laughs> Although it did cause the ID to stay the same. <laughs> wow, uh, it's possible I just discovered a totally unrelated bug. Um, Oh, that's super annoying. Okay, um, so I, th I think I might have fixed a unrelated bug and it's possible this whole ID business was not related to the true bug that we have to worry about. Um, nevertheless, okay, we're just gonna, this is a fix that works for now. Um, we're going to leave that in there just because it might be related and then return back to this bug fix. Yeah, so um, that whole Python object business just got fixed. So, so what happens is um, PyTorch reinitializes objects when they go missing um, uh, because there aren't any. The Python garbage collector collect, collector does not actually delete an object until it gets until there are no references to it, right? So, if you have a dictionary or a list or any kind of py Python object and you you delete all of the references to that object and the garbage collector collects it. So in the case of Python, or PyTorch wrapping C++ objects, this happens pretty frequently. So they're constantly having to reinitialize the Python wrappers around the underlying C++ code, which is what causes the Python objects to come and go a lot. Um, this is particularly true for attributes that are on Python objects um, for whatever reason. I'm actually not totally sure. Um, but by putting a backup attribute, we make it so that model.grad, the Python object, doesn't actually get need to get reinitialized um, because references stick around to it. Um, I'm, that's a little bit hand wavy. I'm not I'm totally sure what, what actually goes under the hood, but I know that keeping backup references with unique names that PyTorch doesn't know to delete um, seems to fix this problem, and it fixed it for some of the other attributes, um, and it seems to fix it for this one as well, such that we get to we keep the same Python object with the same ID um, even when we're calling dot send. Okay, so that all being said, that's a different bug that we happened to fix while we were along the way here. Um, this is obviously not a fix. This is just a little bit of a hack. I don't want to get distracted from the bug that I care about, <laughs> uh, which is the one that we're going for on this dot send underscore. Okay, so let's. Well, we got to come up with a different theory for what's causing this. Um, we know where about it's happening. It's copying happening somewhere before this line on nine line nine fifteen. Um, and now, if we return to our print logic, hopefully our print logic will make a little bit more sense. Test passed. Hey, Jayzoots. Yeah. Working on a new deep learning framework for Fedorin. So um, what I'm looking working on here, Jayzoots, is um, we're working on a federated learning framework. So 
I give a little bit of an intro to this at the beginning of the video, but if you check this out, so there's this really cool thing called federated learning, so there's a link to it. Um, and so what we're working on is a um, library, at the moment it's a library wrapping PyTorch. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, deep, deep learning is awesome stuff, totally agree. Um, so this is a particular variant on uh, deep learning where um, instead of bringing all of your training data to one location um, and training your model there, you send the model out to wherever the data is um, to protect people's privacy, which is kind of part of the interest in why we're wanting to build it. Um, but yeah, um, that's like the grand story. Unfortunately, more specifically, I'm working on a bug <laughs> in the code base, which is right here. Yeah, I, I think it's super cool too. Uh, it's actually something that um, in, in that link, you'll see that uh, Google invented it um, and does it uh, on your Android phone to help protect your privacy. And then um, also Apple is quite famous for doing it um, in their in their in iMessage to help predict what words you're going to uh, text next. That whole the model that does that is trained using federated learning. But there's not really an open source toolkit for doing it, which is what part of what OpenMind is all about. So that's what we're working on. But in this more specifically. Um, we're working on this particular bug right here. Um, we just stumbled upon a very, yeah, couldn't it? So that's that's part of what makes the project exciting. So uh, feel free to um, uh, hop on to Slack and join the project Slack if you want, so you can get an invite there. Um, and I think there's a mailing list too if you're interested in learning deep learning and you're interested in being a part of the organization. But um, yeah. Anyway, so in the process of trying to fix this bug, we discovered a second bug, which we have sort of temporarily fixed right here, and now we're going to see if it fixes the printing that we were, we were trying to do here on line 908, 911. And by fixes, I just mean gives the, um, <laughs> prints out what we thought it was supposed to print out. Um, okay, here we go. Awesome. Look at that. This matches this. Cool. So now we can get rid of this whole duplicate printing thing. And now we at least know that we're working with the same object, right? So the object we pass in, or the Python object we pass in, is the Python object that is actually getting um, incorrectly configured, where we have the is pointer flag that is set to true, but the um, owner, the owner ID, um, is the local machine. So we have a pointer to an object that's on the local machine, which is not correct, because we should never have a pointer to an object that's on the local machine. We should only have pointers to objects that are on not local machines. <laughs> um, now, one of the, so the real only defect here, um, to my knowledge, is the fact that um, what's either that is pointer should actually be false, or that this should already have been converted over to the remote worker's ID. Um, and it's actually a little bit tough to know which one is which one of those is correct. I am inclined to assume that since is pointer was actually changed that it was supposed to be changed and that we sort of forgot to do this. Like I think it's it's more likely that we would have inaction that happened. So let's work with that theory first. So um, step one is to maybe print out this workers object and just to see if this um, this worker is actually the worker of ID one, which is the remote worker. Um, so I don't know if we have to cast that to a string or not, but since we're just doing kind of some sloppy logging, let's uh, go for it that way. Ooh, create some nice little style errors. Love that. Test pass, which is kind of <laughs> nice, but doesn't actually matter. Okay, um, that does not tell us what the ID is. <laughs> we should probably fix the two string for virtual worker. Now I think about it. It's tempting to do that now. Nah, why not? Okay. Oh, I learned a new key command today. So on Sublime Text, if you want to open and close the, whoa, <laughs> as you can see, I'm not very good at it yet. If you want to open and close 
this sidebar, you do Command K and then Command B. So K won't do it by itself, B won't do it by itself, but if you do Command K and then Command B, it will toggle it. Interesting, I haven't seen that kind of um, dual sort of command before. I wasn't actually sure what this whole comment, comma thing was. Um, it's a little odd, but anyway. Um, so let's go down to workers and go to virtual worker. And um, yeah, let's override the two string and make it so that this printing is a little more intuitive. I know it's a little bit of a, I don't know, sideshow or side feature, but if we're trying to print out the virtual worker now and it's annoying us already, then we might as well print out the one um, or change it to where it prints out correctly. So I think we should be able to override this on the base worker. Um, yeah. So let's try the two string. Uh, and what should we print out? Um, I don't mind this whole carrot business. Out equals plus equals self or type of that self. Probably need to convert that to a string. Out plus equals hmm, object. Let's do, let's do ID plus self.id. I'm pretty sure all objects will have IDs. Out plus equals, and then close carrot. So basically, we're, we're doing kind of the same idea that's already here, um, but instead of the Python object ID, we're going to do the actual ID. Um, and then def. So um, in case you aren't familiar with string or wrapper, um, this is what's called if you do print, you know, some object. and But if you just go like this, then it, um, well, we don't have an X object. It's the difference between this and this. O often they're exactly the same, but sometimes they're not, and you have to overload both. Oh, <laughs> self dot. String. All right, let's see if our logging improved. Oh, and we're going to go Command K, Command B. Awesome. Good time to sip some coffee. Oh no! Almost too late there. Okay. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, this still has the carrots on it. Um, guess that's okay. How do I get just that? I mean, I guess I could let's split mm, on single carrot and then grab the first one. I think that'll work. Here I am getting distracted by pretty print. Time to sip coffee again. Uh, tasty. Actually, my coffee's quite cold, but it's good. Love it. That's really nice. Okay, so we have a virtual worker, and the ID is one which is the ID of remote. So we have local, whoa, get back here. <laughs> local, remote. Those are our two workers, uh, in case you didn't know. So local is ID zero, remote is ID one, um, and we are saying send remote, what we're passing in is an array that contains the first worker. So now if we hop back over to hooks, where we were working, so we can see send does get past this list, um, it gets checked. Workers is still uh, correct. Um, now, what does this line do? Um, this hook self dot local worker 
register object. Click self, local order. Now why would it register it locally? That's a little strange, don't you think? Whoop. This must just be a double check, I think. Um, or like an edge case where if you're passing in something that by chance has not been registered yet. Um, because this is this is super strange to register it locally first. Uh, but as I recall, register object won't do anything if it's already been registered. So let's let's ignore that for now. This is a little bit suspicious, but I'm going to. But I assume there are edge cases which require this. Jason, if you're around and you happen to remember what this is useful for, that would be cool. But if you're not, that's uh, that's alright as well. Um, and now it iterates through workers, which is a list. Um, in this case, it's a list of length. Whoa, get back here. In this case, it's a list of length one, which is just one worker, and it calls send object on that worker. Yeah. Oh, I know what this does. This does do something different. This is what reassigns, or what's supposed to reassign the workers. So this is not suspicious. This re-registers the current variable to have new owners. It is after this line self dot owners should point to workers the input variable. Cool. So since this is what should be reassigning workers, this is actually what is what should be converting owners to not be zero, but instead be one, which could be the source of all of our troubles. Like it could be that this is simply not reassigning, um, not changing the owner of this tensor, like it should be, because it's got to change the owner to the, um, you know, to, to wherever we're sending it, right? Because that's going to be the person who actually has the data for uh, after you know send is called, because that's the point of send. Um, all right, so let's check that, shall we? So. Um, let's do a before check. So print before register object. Actually, let's do a, a couple new lines just in case we're, we end up calling this multiple times. We need to figure out which one's the right one. So print before register object, and then we're going to say print um, I am owned by self dot owners and then we're going to do this again we're going to say after register object I'm owned by owners perfect uh, looks like I got a message over here that's a personal message I'll wait until later Actually, the glare on my screen is starting to get. Let's move the. Make sure that we get enough light, but not on the screen. Okay. Looks like the test passed. Let's rebuild. Okay, hit send. Okay, cool. So it looks like it does get re-registered. Awesome. Um, I wonder if we can actually check this. Model dot owners. Aha, okay, so um, the owners for the variable object do get changed.
However, that's not where we're seeing the error, is it? Where we're seeing the error is on the gradient owners, right? So, and specifically gradient dot data model dot data dot owners. Ooh, model dot data dot owners hasn't changed. So model dot owners. There's a lot of objects here that all need to be sent. Data dot owners. Model dot grad dot owners. Model dot grad dot data dot owners. Whew. Okay. So not a lot of stuff gets re-registered. Literally only the high level object, right? So we have model dot owners, which is sort of model, which is the parent, right? The parent has two children, model.data and model.grad, and grad has one child, model.grad.data. And the only thing that actually gets re-registered is this top level object. That is not good. Um, because what it, mm, yeah, that is not good. Oh, okay, I'm starting to understand what this does too. Um, so this step right here re-registers the current variable to have new owners. So new owners. And then if you'll see down here, after we actually send the objects over the wire, we then call register object again, new is pointer status. This line changes the is pointer object to true, or even pointer flag, flag true. So now, what it looks like, so register object is supposed to be hmm, recursive. It's supposed to go down this nested hierarchy and correctly modify everything that needs to be modified. Um, however, what we're seeing is that it's only actually operating on the parent object. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to do that. Um, so yeah, let's figure out what's going on in register object. Actually, before we do that, let's introspect this one and make sure that there isn't something special. Actually, let's see if we observe the same behavior here. So before owner switch change, and then after owner change. Okay, and then before is pointer change. Lots of printing, love it. After is pointer changing, so we can get rid of these new lines as well. Okay, now what I expect to happen here is, so you think the old version in grid used to register things recursively and variable. So um, Jason, when you say the old version in grid used to re-register things recursively, you mean that register object is recursive or register object was called recursively. So is the recursion inside register object or outside register object? <laughs> okay, uh, cool. Well, I'm checking it out on this side too. Um, Okay, so this is how it starts. Before owner change, after owner change. Before pointer change, after pointer change. And then if we go up here, we'll see model owners. And then model dot is pointer. Model dot data dot is pointer. Model dot rad dot is pointer model.grad.data.isPointer. Oh, 
that's really surprising. Okay, so we're getting really weird recursive behavior here. So um, it looks like for the owner's attribute, it only updates the top level object. But for the is pointer attribute, <laughs> it updates just the top level object, but also the most nested object, which is model.grad.data, which is very confusing. Don't know why I would do that, but I know what we need to find out. We need to go check out register object. Really wish I could do a top bottom layout here. Uh, layout rows two. Ah, oh, gorgeous. Okay, cool. I actually still want. Well, I actually I kind of want hooks top pie to be open down here too. Can I do that? Come on. Oh, it's not gonna let me. That's annoying. I guess I could go into the build and look at it, but that's sort of cheating. <laughs> Core hooks top pie. Okay, I know this is cheating. It's a little weird, but. Um, okay, now K, B. Awesome. Okay, so def send Okay, here's where we are. We're trying to figure out whether this register object is recursive or not. Um, and I suspect that it won't be. Def register Oh, it's on the worker. Didn't even need to. I'm such a goofball. Okay, move worker down here. Def register object. Okay, here we are. Registers an object within the current worker node. Selects an ID for the object. Assigns a list of workers and establishes whether it's a pointer or not. This method is generally not used by the client. Is instead used by internal processes, hooks, and workers. Okay, cool. Um. Oh, this thing is not remotely recursive. <laughs> Check it out. It never calls itself. Um, I guess the question is, should it be? Huh. Let's open. This method gets called a ton, which makes me a little nervous changing it to be recursive. However, it kind of makes sense that it should be recursive. Huh. Is there a pointer call register object? Yeah, it does. Fascinating. Where does it actually air out? Oh. It errors out inside of register object. Oh, okay. That's I, I this is this also explains why this does get reset. So, um this recursion, so ver <laughs> funny enough, <laughs> register object is not recursive, but ver to pointer is recursive, and it's recursive in a depth first order, right? So as you can see, it goes deeper before it actually processes its own node. So basically what's happening is um, it is not you know, ver to pointer is, is going to the bottom. So right, so these actual register object calls up here um, in serialize only affect the top level which we see in both cases. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jason just had a uh, got, got it as well. So they only affect the top version. So model.owners changes and model.isPointer changes. But um, ver to pointer is recursive in a depth first way, but it goes straight to the bottom where we encounter this error. So it goes straight to the bottom, makes the modific makes a, a modification, um, and then fails, throws this exception, which is why we get something at the bottom as well. Now, this makes me think maybe 
we should swap this. Maybe there to pointer shouldn't be recursive and register object should be. Hmm. The only thing, so I actually like this there to pointer method. method. Let's actually log what's going on here. So this uh, recursively calls there to pointer in a depth first fashion. This deletes local data because now it's a pointer. This is really nice because it helps avoid the confusion of people thinking that pointers are actually objects. Uh, because then when you do things like print or you try to call anything locally, it goes, what are you talking about? Um, because it, it makes the size. So strictly speaking, this is not necessary, but it kind of makes sense because you're sending the data over the wire. You should probably delete the local data um, to remote data. And then registers object data. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking there to pointer should not be recursive. So I'm thinking this is a bad idea. Not a bad idea, but like it, it's less complex. complex. I like this, so th it should be responsible for doing this. Um, and I'm not sure how we want to handle the recursion. So there's recursion to variables inside of variables, which is like var to var.grad, right? So model.data, or sorry, model and model.grad, that's a variable inside of a variable, right? So if we look at model, variable, model.grad, variable. Oh, well, gosh, um, hilarious, All right? model, model.grad. So both these are variables. So we have that type of recursion, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean we have to be recursive all the way down to data, because we also have model.data and model.grad.data. So we could stop before the quote unquote dot datas and just have register object be recursive down Hmm. I'm not sure I like that either. Because register object is used not just for variables, but it's also used to register just straight up tensors, which don't have a dot data. So register object seems like it should basically navigate down the entire tree of variables and tensors um, recursively. And var to pointer should only be called on the variable parts of that tree. I think that makes sense. I'm a little worried about this because register object is used all over the place and it's just so likely that I'm going to break a lot of stuff trying to fix this. <laughs> but who knows, maybe it'll be a little more elegant. Um, but there's going to be a lot of cleanup for this um, because I suspect I suspect that other parts of the code base are doing kind of part of the recursion as well, um, kind of like this var to pointer. Like I think I think there's more recursive stuff in other places. Hmm. Eh, what the hell? Let's. Worst case, we pull from master again. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Um, so the plan is we are going to make register object a recursive operation, but as a backup, we're going to have it. No, that's what we're going to do. So now should we do depth first? I don't think it matters. Okay, so this is the performance of register object, and now we want to 
perform recursive operations. So we want to check if there is a, a child tensor, which means self dot data, or if it's a child tensor, call register object on it with the new parameterization, like with uh, you know the worker or the owner. Yeah, with with basically the new the new owners and stuff. Um, if there is a child variable self dot grad call register object on it and call ooh register object it doesn't really know whether it's doing something with a pointer or not if is pointer is that a thing Ugh. hmm So register object does not always know whether it's registering a pointer or not. Oh, it does know is pointer though. That's something. I think is pointer might need to still be recursive because register object doesn't call it fair to pointer. Yeah. This should still be called recursively, but this should not. Ugh. Wait, register object. Yeah, something needs to be recursive. You're right. Register object doesn't accept his pointer as a parameter. Does it? Oh, <laughs> nice. Okay, it does. Um, hmm. Okay, so register object does know whether it should be a pointer. The only spare thing we really need to do is, okay, yeah, we needed to tell it to have set is pointer to true, right? Which we can do with the register part, but the part that's missing is what ver to pointer is doing, which is setting the data to be zero. Like that's the only part that we still need to do. But that's not really a registration thing. That's like a cleanup thing. Like that's kind of a weird thing to include in a registration function. So where should we? All right. You know what? We're not gonna worry about that yet. Um, I think we can get rid of this method entirely. And this part, where it's resetting, is pointer should should do it. Right, and what was it returning? There. Okay, so it's returning self. Return self. Okay. Huh. This is a uh, this is weird. Okay, so what I yeah we're gonna we're going to ignore deleting the actual data when creating pointers for now. Mm -hmm. Um. And we'll figure that out later. They might both need to be recursive. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. So, Redis dropping is going to be recursive. We were in the midst of making it recursive. So, it's going to be recursive to both child variables and child tensors. So, um, if self, oh, has at her. <laughs> we sort of already have this if statement written. Although last time we ran it, it didn't work. No, it did work. We had a different bug. That's right. So if we have grad, call register object self dot register object. Yeah. 
worker equals worker. Object equals self dot grad doi. Force attached worker equals force attached worker. We're gonna have style issues because this is really long. And temporary equals temporary. Um, I guess kwr equals kwr. Can I pass that in just like that? I don't know if I can do that or not. All right, well, let's just try it for now. And then if has atter self data call register object on self.data. Huh. All right, this is going to go, I don't know what this is gonna do. I don't think it would create an infinite loop. I'm pretty sure it just might do a lot more registration than it needs to. And it already does. Okay. We've got our test. Survey says. build. <laughs> it's like, we changed a lot of code to have nothing be different. Okay, let's restart this. Jose is a cool dude. Oh no! Positional object argument follows keyword argument. Emojis. Holiday sounds nice. Okay. Where were we? Positional argument follows keyword argument. Workers 528. Oh, <laughs> object equals. It's always the little things. Come on, come on, you can do it. Do they all? Oh, look at that. All the tests passed. Go figure. Doesn't mean much, but better than all them feeling. Okay. Hey, didn't get an error. That's cool. Now let's check model out owners. Reassigned, not reassigned, not reassigned, not re No! <gasps> uh. I'm pretty sure all of these should have been reassigned. Ugh. Wait, I thought, I thought when is pointer is true, it changes how this is printed. Doesn't it? Well, it did change who the owner is, so that's nice. I could have swore that. Tensor Repper. Oh, no. Huh. 
guess we didn't override hook variable uh, to a string. I can't, okay, so I can't really tell. Okay, remote dot objects. Okay, so remote definitely has it. And local object shouldn't have anything, right? Okay. It kind of looks like it's sent, but did it send? The two string is definitely weird. And this whole recursion business didn't work, which is super confusing. Why wouldn't the recursion work? Because, like, like, so the owners didn't get reset for all the parts of model. Yeah, this didn't work yet. Register object. Hmm. Uh. Oh, wait. Self dot. Oh, we don't want to, not self, object. I'm such a goofball. Okay, let's try this again. We were checking to see if, <laughs> we were checking to see if the worker had a gradient. We're supposed to check to see if the tensor had a gradient. And here we go. Um, someone just ran into our boat. <laughs> Sorry for the loud noise. Um, okay. Cannot call data on tensor. Oh. Oh, that's right. Oh, this is so annoying. Um, PyTorch has a specific runtime error for calling data on tensor. Um, which makes it so you can't use has adder on it. Isn't that fun? You actually have to do the try catch. Try That's silly. Um, oh yeah, try accept, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rub it in my face, Jason. <laughs> uh, Jason and I are having a debate on uh, if statements versus try accept and uh, this is definitely a case when you have to do try accept <laughs> uh, virtual worker object has no attribute grad what the heck the whole point of this was to check and see whether it had grad <sighs> okay where is this 528 That's, that's, oh, oh, I'm such a goofball. Okay, here we go. Survey says, come on. Oh, okay. Well, we're getting there. This is a different error. Okay, none type object has no HP ID. Workers 488. Oh, good call. Thanks, Jason. Um, oh, I actually have another check too. Um, if object that data is not none. So it can have the attribute and the attribute can still be none. Which is what this error is about. If ooh, if obj.grad is not none. Okay. Accept runtime error. Thank you, Jason. Master of the try accept. Right, come on, come on. Pass tests, pass. 
Hey! Cool. All right, let's try. Okay, 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 okay. So these all start correctly. Great. Let's do this. No errors. Okay. That one's good. Oh, no! <sighs> Why is it not working? Hmm. <laughs> Is that a referee? <laughs> Is that like a football reference to like run error or runtime flag? <laughs> Let's see. There's a delity. Oh, touchdown. Yeah, yeah. There's a delay. Yeah. <laughs> so it is, it is a football reference. There you go. Around here, when people talk about football, it's totally different. I'm talking about the World Cup. Okay, all right, so strangely, the recursive part of this is not getting called, which is very annoying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably partially because of my um, internet connection. Doing this over a uh, cell phone. Surprised you can hear me at all. <laughs> okay. Why is this not getting called? Okay. Mm. Oh, but I know what I don't want to do. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to print out every time register object it gets called because it gets called so many times, like hundreds of times. Okay, so this is a little odd. This is a little odd. ID probably shouldn't be in there, but owners probably should. That could be the issue. So instead of doing kwr, I'm going to do owners equals object dot owners. And we'll do is pointer equals object dot is pointer. This doesn't seem like it would make the difference to me, but it's it's possible. What is a worker in this case? Yeah. Let's, oh. Let's try this. I don't think this will work either. I'm actually, I'm thinking these else statements are a little bit suspicious. Like if we happen to not pass in, hmm, yeah. No errors. <gasps> Boom, son. Oh yeah. What did I do again? <laughs> oh yeah, pass in owners and his pointers explicitly. Uh, amazing. Okay, now let's see if it actually got registered on the other side. So remote.objects, 
Oh yeah, that right there, my friend, is the outer variable, the variable's gradient, the variable, the variable's data, and the variable gradient's data. I think model.id, model.data.id, maybe not, grad.id, model.grad.data.id. What the hell are these? <laughs> oh, it created random IDs because I did not include an ID, which means I should. ID equals object.data.id. So I don't want it to change the ID in this particular case. Yeah, that should work. Okay, test pass, that's good. Okay, these are all supposed to be false and zero. Okay, boom, man, so excited about that. That just feels so good. Oh, there's only three, why are there only three? Three five five eight nine five. Oh. Model that data dot ID and model dot grad dot ID are the same. Oh. <laughs> my bad. My bad. My bad. Wow, that would have been Man, if I had not noticed that, that would have been a bug that who knows how long it would have taken to find that. Let's try this again. Boom. 246, 575, yep. 901, yep. 425, yep. Boom, son. Yeah, getting it done. All right, now if we look at model. Oh, yes, it prints out correctly. It's so good. Okay. This was awesome. This was such a satisfying project. <laughs> um, wow, what a bug. That was such a doozy. And we got to use it, we got to solve it with recursion. I love solving it with recursion. Recursion's my favorite. My favorite flave. Um, okay, so that was my favorite flave. Now it's time to do some cleanup. So there was one thing in hmm, there what was it? There was some piece of functionality that we bear to pointer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing. Yeah, this line, this line. Hmm. Still needs to get called somewhere. Um, but just for variables. Uh, what the heck? Let's just put it in register, I guess. Maybe send. No, the register's the recursive part. Yeah, I'm putting register for now. Jason, feel free to protest if you feel like protesting. Um, I'm gonna say object dot data. So whenever there's an object dot, <laughs> you missed that. Okay, so so this right here, this this line that used to be very data, where it zeroes out all of the um, all of the values inside a tensor when we may send it to be remote. I'm not sure what to where to do it. Um, the choice is oh I can't put it in register object. Well yeah the choice is to put it in register object and so basically if just check like is if is pointer is true, right? So um if is pointer you know 
object dot is pointer is true, right? So if it's true, then object dot yeah. If this is a tensor and it's a pointer, zero it out. But uh, it's not my favorite. Um, like is instance of well but what if it gets called directly on a tensor though it wouldn't have an object out data um, yeah okay um, but here's the reason I feel weird about it though, Jason, is that like register object shouldn't be modifying data values. That's weird. Like it's a, it's a registration function. It's not a, you know, object modification function. So yeah, it's just, it's just weird semantically. Um, it's not very clean. So maybe Maybe we should keep this as this fair to pointer thing and have it also be recursive. Not to be overly fancy, but um, like def fair pointer. We just don't have a call register object again, right? So it just yeah, I like this better because this only recurses through. only recursive through variables ignores dot data okay cool glad you like it if you like it I like it and we're good um, sweet yeah let's do that and it returns it doesn't actually re return anything recursive it just returns the object back which works great so let's just double check that that's what we wanted. So I can double check that it didn't actually small that data to zero. Um, Okay, yeah, so this is what's telling me that the data is still kind of there. So this should not be there. Okay, here we go. We're going to turn this notebook into a unit test here in a second, too. It's going to be awesome. Boom. Worked. And gorgeous, gorgeous. I love it. I love it so much. All right, sweet. This was an awesome project. This was a very satisfying bug. Sometimes bugs can just be so frustrating and they just don't do what you want them to do. Um, I'll respond to you in a bit, Carrot. Um, but I don't know what your message is until I open it up. Cool. So, what do we need to do? Um, first things first, let's write the unit test because that's fun. I love unit tests. Um, let's first use our fancy command K, command B. All right. Hop down to the unit testes. I've been throwing all the torch related ones in this sort of torch test thing. We'll probably need to make this its own folder at some point, but for now, for now, this should be fine. Um, command K, Command B. Test torch tensor. So in this case, we're going to test torch variable. So test test send variable with gradient.
so previously there was a bug involving sending variables with gradients to remote sensors. This bug was documented in issue 1350. Go ahead and pop the link in there. We, what did we do? We fixed it. The issue using recursion, that doesn't need to be here. This unit test ensures proper function. Oh, I just remembered something. Um, this whole deal, <laughs> we still haven't fixed this. So if I actually, if I re-ran this and did not do this little hack that we did to keep the grading around, this might not work because it would get a different ID. That was weird. Okay, one five one. Seven nine three. Dude, it totally gets a new ID. Ugh. Okay. <sighs> Alright, so whenever a gradient is initialized. Whenever a gradient is initialized, I need good night. To initialize a backup gradient. How in the world am I going to check that? Because gradients are first initialized using torch. First initialize using torch. Okay, what happens when I initialize a gradient? So model equals there. This already have grad, model.grad. Ooh. So the grad doesn't exist yet. Okay, let's let's try running this up here. So the, the uh, grad gets populated with an object in these three lines. Um, so when I'm running this down here, it's um, it's literally taking an object that exists in grad and creating another pointer to it, pointer to it from grad backup. But if I do it up here, it doesn't quite exist yet. But I'm pretty sure it's pointing to something that's none. Um, all that is to say, if this works, then I can just pack this into the new function for variable, and it should work. But only one way to find out. If this does work, we're going to create a separate unit test for this as well. All right, come on, son. Cross your fingers. That is just weird. Why does that not? <laughs> That's so strange. Um, okay, doesn't air out. All right, show me the money. 427-570. Oh, it doesn't work. Dang it. Ugh. How am I going to do that? I need some sort of hook that whenever a gradient is created, it will create a backup pointer. But that sounds hard. Hmm. I wonder if gradients know that they're gradients. Or if they think that they are just variables. <sighs> hmm. This is a tough call. Sorry for the silence. I'm just not sure I'm going to solve this. You have any ideas, Jason? This could be a good time to help. Basically, what we need to figure out is we need to call this line because this fixes it this guy but after a gradient object has been initialized on a variable 
We only need to do it once. That's fine. Basically, whenever loss.backward is called, <sighs> okay, what kind of functions do we have on think about gradients? Grad function, grad registered, grad, grad backup, old grad, retain grad, requires grad, old retain grad. It's got to be a hook on gradients. So let's check out PyTorch a little bit. PyTorch doc stable documentation. Um, friendly reminder, OpenMind uses PyTorch 0.3.1. We will actually skip 0.4.0. You should check where grad gets hooked. Um, there it gets hooked in hook of their properties in PySift or PyTorch. Oh, all powerful JSON <laughs> in PySift. Okay. Um hook let's see bear properties properties hook new data hook new grad. That's cool. Uh, new data, new grad. Hook fair contents. Hook variable. Sorry, guys, I'm just reading the source code here, trying to figure out trying to find anywhere so here, here's here's mm. so Jason my suspicion is that we would actually need to find a PyTorch hook for this because this isn't even necessarily when I'm deserializing or serializing an object or doing anything fancy like like I need it to automatically create this second reference when we call loss.backward right Hook fair contents. Oh, grad is a function. Holy cow, that kind of looks like it will. No. No way. That is so weird. <laughs> I smell like attributes with actually functions. Oh, that's so weird. Okay, self. Okay, self.oldgrad. But where is self.grad? Oh, that's weird. Okay, so that's actually even weirder, Jason, because that means that when I'm saying grad backup equals model.grad, it's running this function, and the output of it is getting deposited on model dot, which to me, on the one hand, it's what needs to happen. On the other hand, there's probably a reason PyTorch has a function there, not an object. <laughs> um, so how do I, where's the overloading? Is, is, is this a new grad, this is, this is the overloading? Turn self old grad. Um,
I think what I have to do is say self.grad backup equals self.old grad. <laughs> it looks super weird because it looks like I'm returning some sort of object here, but this is returning a function, and this is actually running the function, but they look identical. <laughs> If this works, there's no way this is going to work. But if it does, that'd be awesome. Like, what a hilarious two pieces of code. Whoops. I didn't like that. 137. Oh, I didn't finish this test. That out for now. We'll, we'll come back to the test in a minute. Come on. Okay, test finished. Okay. <laughs> well, grad backup exists. This might have worked. Okay, 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 okay. Please work, please work, please work, please work, please work. Send 733 953. Boom! Oh my gosh, sorry, that was probably super loud for you. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. That's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, how am I going to write a comment to explain what the hell this is doing? Um, you need so much context. Um, okay, well first I'll start with do not remove this line unless you know what you're doing. Ooh, hey, I'll link to this, uh, this um, thingy, um, this video, because it has all the context you need. Uh, Ooh, don't play, don't play. Okay, um, where's the link? How do I find a link? Okay, weird monster. That, that wasn't in my video. <laughs> okay, uh, where is, where's the link? Video six? Uh, okay, I think it's this video. Yes, thank you. <laughs> this, um, for context behind this edit, you can see the following video. Long story short, we need to actually run the grad generating function dot old grad and cache its value the variables gradient in self.grad backup so that Python garbage collection doesn't delete it's weird doesn't delete mm, the Python object as a part of PyTorch's mm, C++ wrapping craziness which does a lot of reinstantiating objects. In this case, reinstantiating the object gives it a new ID because the object containing the old ID goes away. This ID is random, which can create problems for PySift. Okay. It's reasonably complete. Um, please forgive me. I have not done a commit in forever. Um, I don't even know what to say. How long are we into this video? I don't know. Oh wait, I can check down here. Uh, one fifty-six. <laughs> I should commit more than every two hours. Sorry, guys. One fifty-six zero. Um. Okay, uh, that was a weird commit. Never done that before. Uh, probably won't do it again. I'll probably do it again, but I'll try not to do it. Um, okay, so 
What do we got here? Oh yeah, we were doing unit tests. Okay, so actually let's do a unit test for this whole craziness first. So def, I don't know why I covered it out. Test gradient keeps ID during send self. Okay, so we can use this notebook to sort of construct the test. So this was there, gradient keeps ID during send. Don't think I need, don't need that. Pretty sure all these imports have already been imported. And there's a special way of doing hook. You have a turn off or both. Um, virtual worker. Oh yeah. Just to make sure all the logging doesn't run. Um, remote worker. Verbose equals false. Okay, I'm, just, I'm just making sure that all the testing is turned off. Hey, Amber. Hiya. Um, the live stream is on, so you know. Um, fix all these style issues before they complain. Okay, so this is on model. Delete that. Okay, so this has a grad object. So grad's true ID. The grad's true ID. And basically, oh, model that data, yes, sorry. Data ID. True grad ID equals model dot grad data ID. Let's do plus zero. I know this sounds kind of weird, but um, I just want to make sure it's not the actual same object. I'm pretty sure Python would never do that to me, but uh, yeah. Plus zero to me means it will won't, won't do a it will at least do a copy. Okay, so and then what I care about is that when I say model dot send remote. These IDs shouldn't have changed. So assert model.data.id equals true data ID. Assert model.grad.data.id equals true grad ID. I should say original. Yeah, it's a better name. Boom! Lovely. Uh, where was that? Twitch. about two, one D one, two ish. <laughs> okay. So let's just check and make sure that passes. Ah Dag it. <sighs> Drink some coffee. How are you, Amber? Um, Jason's here. He's been helping me a lot today. 
Okay. Looks like the test passed. Lovely. Okay, and now we want to finish the other unit test that we were creating, which was test send there with gradient. And then after that, we can get back to actually building federated learning, which is what we want to actually be doing. Okay. Okay, see you in a bit, Jason. Actually, man, I could go for lunch too. Oh, do you want to have. Are you hungry too? Okay. Maybe I can log off um, in a little while. But let me just finish this. Um, this, this you. Mm, yeah, I'm hungry too. Okay. Um, okay, so what we're going to do here. Oh, we can use the same dilio. IDs because we were testing that separately. And then we're going to assert that model owners. So the first time, model.owners Okay, assert. Assert Man, this worked out nice. This is just a unit test that writes itself. Okay, and assert not. Ooh. This should be. We might change how we do default local worker IDs at some point. So we should say local ID. I know it's zero for right now, but, but yeah. Okay, is pointer in that? Assert not. Model.grad is pointer. Assert not. Model.grad.data is pointer. Gorgeous. I love it. I love it. All right, now we do model.send. And then Whoa, did I not run it? Yeah. Uh, dot zero dot ID equals. We're going to break this at some point, I think, but it'll be for a different reason. Remote. 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 And. All right, show me a passing test. Oh, variable object has no attribute ID in workers.py 532. Oh, this is that one we were getting before. Oh, wait. <laughs> Let's try that again. Variable object has no attribute owners. That's weird. Test send var with gradient. Has no attribute owners. 
That is not what I expected. Okay, let's... Let's rerun this. This is... Just to make sure it's running exactly the right thing. One ninety five model dot grad dot owners. Well, it seems like it does. Something else that we're doing that's creating it? Ah. But then the second time. That's super weird. <laughs> oh, it's like whack-a-mole. Um, oh, why is it doing that? Uh, something about printing it. Oh, man. That's really, really strange. object is not registered yet until we print it. Why is it not registered? Oh boy. Oh. Okay. Better question. So it doesn't have backup red either. Oh, that's what I meant. Okay, hold on. Let's, oh, I want to see if grad backup is there yet. Okay, so still getting there, model dot grad. Okay, so basically it hasn't been registered yet. So when there's a new grad, we call this register object. Let's see if grad registered equals true, because it probably doesn't. Ooh, that's not good. Oh. Fascinating. So for some reason, owners is not getting set. Which 
for some reason owners is not getting set this is the logic for owners <laughs> I love this is actually a backup check to see if the parent has been registered on the off chance that the gradient was registered first, which is a weird thing. Okay, this one seems kind of sketch. Seems a little sketch. Why are we having check to see whether the parent registered? In what world is there an edge case where gradients are created before their parents? To do fix. Hmm. Maybe some coffee will give me some enlightenment. Okay. Does it have an ID? Strange. Strange. So I'm actually not quite sure of a diagnosis issue. Um, registered because it thinks that it was registered which means it was either registered with owners being empty or it was registered and then unregistered with owners being empty so I suppose we should just check um, so print registering gradient with ID, object ID. Let's just start simple, start with that. We'll build it, probably need to comment out this method, this test. It's not gonna work without it, so. All right, try this again, making progress, getting there. Holy cow. We register the same gradient like a kajillion times. Look at that. That is nuts. Holy cow.